Clint Boyer entered 2008 with momentum due to his 180 in performance, as if trying to become the first driver to win a title in his third season since Jeff Gordon wasn't hard enough. Clint Boyer went up to Richard Childress and said, man, I want to double down. And no, this didn't result in a driver-owner trip to the Lexington, North Carolina KFC. NRF Productions presents Double Down, Clint Boyer's 2008 NASCAR title pursuit. Steady Eddie was the word that you could describe Clint Boyer's 2007. If it weren't for the clash of the Hendrick Titans, Jeff Gordon, and Jimmy Johnson, Clint Boyer would have been your 2007 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series champion. Clint Boyer was officially a someone in this world, someone that had accomplished much more than simply meeting Lisa Marie as a diehard Elvis fan. This 2008 cast of the Jack Daniels 07 Cup team saw Clint Boyer reprise his role as the driver and Gil Martin as the crew chief. Should Clint Boyer win the 2008 NASCAR Cup Series Championship, he would do something last done by Jeff Gordon all the way back in 1995. He would officially win the title in just his third season of competition. Clint Boyer knew what he needed to do. It's still the same goals, you know, you have to make that chase, you have to be consistent, you have to do, do that first before you can ever race for a championship. For this 29 year old from Emporia, Kansas, his energy, it was through the roof and everyone understood why. But like all of us, we have flaws, we have imperfections, we have things about ourselves that we really don't like. For Clint Boyer, that was graduating up to the NASCAR Cup Series without winning the, at the time, NASCAR Bush Series title. So why is this such a big issue? All-time greats like Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson were Bush Series busts before they became the greatest Cup Series drivers of a generation. As a Midwest racer, Clint Boyer was instilled a rites of passage at an early age. In order to advance to the next level, the next rank, Boyer had to win the division championship that he was currently competing in. Basically, think of it like a video game. You don't get to that final level until you complete rounds one, rounds two, rounds three. Clint Boyer's NASCAR Bush Series career shook up his norm. Yes, while he made a name for himself in the AC Delco number two, he never etched his name into stone, put it in definitive print as NASCAR Bush Series champion. Because Richard Childress long before that said, hey, you're good enough for the NASCAR Cup Series program. We've got Dave Blaney here, he's subpar in the Jack Daniels 07, how about you take over this car full time in 2006? So the liquor beverage Jack Daniels, it is seen as the temporary short term solution to cope with life's problems. Nevertheless guys, we all know that feeling, what it feels like to hit rock bottom. And for a Clint Boyer now, with an unlimited supply of Jack Daniels, I fully expect he dealt with not winning a Bush Series title in a similar manner, especially since Clint Boyer is a man that loves his trophies. That empty space in his house was soul crushing for Clint Boyer. So one day he got up the courage to ask his boss, Richard Childress, to have him double down for this 2008 NASCAR season. Now, if this were, say, seven years ago, Richard Childress would have calmly said to Clint Boyer, All right, Clint, let's get you off the caffeinated beverages and alcohol. In 2008, well, time evolved so much to where it was now a NASCAR norm for Cup Series drivers to double dip and steal all the opportunities, all the sponsorship dollars away from the unproven regulars. Look no further than his teammate Kevin Harvick. His exceptional 2001 double down proved that even in tough times, a driver could manage the grind of two 30 race schedules. In fact, this wouldn't be Clint Boyer's first double down considering he raced for the Bush Series title and the Cup Series Rookie of the Year in 2006. A couple days later, it was made official. For the first time since 2006 and the third time in his career, Clint Boyer would compete full time in the NASCAR Nationwide Series and pursue the division's Drivers' Championship. Clint Boyer called this a great opportunity. New sponsor to NASCAR, BB&T, wanted to expand their involvement, their portfolio, and so this was naturally his calling to attempt to fix the broken rung on his racing ladder. 
the 2008 RCR number two nationwide team consisted of ECR engine specialists and most notably Jimmy Kitchens. This was the championship rear tire changer turned racer turned spotter after his racing funds dried up. For Clint Boyer, this was his last chance to go down in history as a NASCAR Nationwide Series champion. The series was fun, but it was also taxing. Even to someone named Clint Boyer who now had his priorities of racing on Sunday as well as Saturday. Clint Boyer would kiss his family goodbye to go professional stock car racing. 71 points races over 41 consecutive weeks of racing, yes, even Easter weekend. He would go through all of this to attempt to double down on his NASCAR championship efforts. The trophy case of Clint Boyer was just 18 laps away from including the Harley J. Earl trophy for the 50th running of the Daytona 500. So in the words of that one TikTok guy, Clint Boyer, what happened? Well, his teammate Jeff Burton had other ideas, other ambitions. Rather than working together with his RCR teammate, the 31 side drafted and stole the momentum from the 07, which would cause Clint Boyer to spin out of the lead and out of Daytona 500 contention. Yeah, getting into a fight with your own teammate is not the ideal way to start your double down. Okay, so 2008 didn't give Clint Boyer the warmest welcome, but there was no need to be discouraged. As Richard Childress likes to tell his drivers, luck occurs when preparation meets opportunity. Clint Boyer's most strategic move during the Sharpie Mini 300 wasn't banging doors to the line, nor was it a textbook bump and run. Clint Boyer, he won this race by simply staying out following the seventh caution of the race. Because if you aren't aware by now, there are only three guarantees in this life. Death, taxes, and the Bristol Spring Race getting impacted by weather. Being well past the halfway mark needed to complete this race, 47 minutes later, NASCAR awarded the driver that loves trophies his first of 2008. Clint Boyer has been uh, declared the winner of this race. Hoping to run around like Frosty with a broomstick in his hand on Sunday, Boyer would ultimately contribute to the first 1-2-3 finish in RCR history. Clint Boyer's preparation during the week was paying off. After nine races, that Boyer had his 2007 chase form as the seventh best driver in the Cup Series point standings. Now the NASCAR Cup Series Tour would descend onto Richmond. While his career was still young, Richmond was one of the only places that was inside Clint Boyer's comfort zone as a NASCAR Cup Series driver. Keep in mind, it was this track back in September that officially qualified him for his first chase. For the first 381 laps, this summed up the 2008 Crown Royal 400. It's Denny time. Denny Hamlin was unstoppable before his tire let go to end his strong homecoming run. Now, it was the sport's most popular driver versus the guy he replaced to showcase the biggest storyline of 2008 battling for this victory in Richmond. For Clint Boyer, he wasn't phased by any of this. Knowing the values Richard Childress instilled into him, his preparation during the week would be met with opportunity. Got one. Wow. Whoa! Now that is part of the seas right there. Boyer's going to take it to the bank, take it to bb and t and cash the check. He wins in Richmond. Clint Boyer, like in his double down, took note of teammate Kevin Harvick to become Mr. Where Did He Come From? Momentum is a strong word in the NASCAR Cup Series. Clint Boyer, who was on a seven race top 10 streak, seemed poised to be a contender in the Cup Series portion of the double down. However, like I mentioned, momentum is a strong word in the NASCAR Cup Series. Momentum is something that can be quickly gained, but at the same time, it is also something that can be quickly lost. And Clint Boyer and this 07 team would find out the hard way. At Darlington, he admired the Lady in Black a little too much. At Dover, he was one of the victims of Elliott Sadler being, well, a bad race car driver. The splitter was broken from this crash, and eventually the right front shock absorber broke out of the frame, pretty much ending any chance Clint Boyer had of getting a good finish. Pocono, he got loose on the front stretch of all places. Boyer, again, come on. 
he would officially suffer some major damage that took him out of the mix after colliding with the 42. New Hampshire, he was once again a victim of bad driving, this time Sam Hornish Jr.'s bad driving. I guess at the very least, Sam Hornish Jr. openly acknowledged he was at fault. Fortunately, he would catch a lucky caution because he had a potential right rear flat after Chad McCombie pretty much washed up the track and got into Boyer. Watkins Glen, he was pleading for mercy. Clint Boyer struggled all day to maximize the performance of the car. Then at Michigan, he suffered a similar issue he had in the spring as well as at Auto Club. He was too loose and spent a sizable amount of time in the mid to late 20s. Suddenly, Steady Eddie was more like Loose Bruce. Clint Boyer's 2008 season was spiraling out of control to the point where he was on the outside looking in with four races until the start of the chase. Perhaps this was partly because he had his priorities on Saturday as well. Clint Boyer to this point still had one win despite a few close calls. At Nashville in the spring, he was passed by Scott Wimmer late in the race. At Nashville in the summer, he was passed by Brad Keselowski late in the race. Then at Bristol, he lost on the final restart to Brad Keselowski. Yeah, there was a lot of heartbreak in Tennessee for Clint Boyer after his rainout win. Unlike the NASCAR Cup Series, there were no shortcuts, there was no chase. Clint Boyer, being the steady Eddie he is, seemed to be operating on motor oil instead of blood. This is because he was almost unhuman-like with 17 top 10 finishes in 19 races. 122 points was the advantage Clint Boyer built for himself in the NASCAR Nationwide Series title pursuit. Because the stresses of losing this cushion were low, the attention for now turned mostly to the cup side of things. All signs pointed to Clint Boyer getting the finish that he needed. The night before, as heartbreaking of a loss as it was, 120 laps in clean, fresh air always makes you feel good. This race, however, was no Saturday night cruise. He and Gil Martin saw their season flash before their eyes when NASCAR's worst driver nearly took Clint Boyer and this 07 out of the race. Michael Waltrip is the worst driver in NASCAR, period. Cannot believe Napa signed back on. Still, the 07 remained steady under pressure and got the top 10 run they needed to remain above the chase cut line. The next week, Boyer and Martin actually did good for once at a fast two-mile super speedway. This 10th place finish at Auto Club meant that the hard part was out of the way and the stress was off for the most part. All Clint Boyer needed to do to clinch a spot in the chase was finish 12th. With Richmond being a place of comfort for the 07, it was game over for David Reagan and Casey Kane. After finishing 12th, Clint Boyer locked it in. He was into the chase for the second year in a row. The near three month long slump was replaced with a clean slate. As one of the only chase drivers with a win, Clint Boyer was ranked on the higher end of the chase grid. Like in 2007, Clint Boyer and Gil Martin, they ripped a page out of the Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canals playbook. This group of guys right here, they performed when it mattered. In fact, you could say that Clint Boyer was the 12th man because this was where he finished four times in the chase. But most importantly, as the 12th man, he only finished below that threshold only once. This happened to be Atlanta when Gil Martin made an air pressure adjustment on every tire except the left rear. Like all season long on the bigger tracks, Clint Boyer was too loose. The 20th place finish officially put his title hopes out of reach. After being the 12th man yet again in Phoenix, Clint Boyer, even with 8 finishes 12th or better in the chase, was mathematically eliminated from cup title contention. Week 41 in Homestead, Miami meant Clint Boyer's grind was coming to an end. His NASCAR Cup Series championship dreams were on halt for 2008, but that didn't mean his nationwide ambitions were as well. Clint Boyer's only win was still a rain-shortened affair. Did it matter? No, it didn't. This number two team remained consistent all year long, getting the top five and the top ten finishes necessary even when they were on eggshells these last couple weeks. 
The momentum in the 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series season shifted when Clint Boyer's dominant 195 lap affair was spoiled by Carl Edwards. Over the next six races, Carl Edwards hacked away at the towering firm points lead Clint Boyer had grown. Some far from clean races from Boyer at Memphis and Phoenix, coupled with finishes of first, second, and first by Edwards made this title a fight to the end. All it took was one slip up, one mistake by Clint Boyer, and just like that all of a sudden Clint Boyer would be back to being depressed drinking the entire bottle of Jack Daniels over his nationwide series loss. 11th place or better was a necessity for Clint Boyer because Carl Edwards, he wasn't slowing down. He was not going to let all this momentum go to waste and let his foot off the gas. With 34 laps to go, he would pass Kyle Busch and never look back. Carl Edwards won in the NASCAR Nationwide Series for the third time in four races. We know Carl Edwards heats up when it matters, but what do we know about Clint Boyer? We know he's willing to do anything to win a nationwide title. We know he has the energy and the stamina to become a champion as well as the fact that he loves his trophies. So with all that said, it should be no surprise that for the 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series season, for this driver's championship, slow but steady Eddie won the race. And the 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series champion is Clint Boyer. Congratulations, Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer would officially have the NASCAR Nationwide Series trophy for the rest of his life. No more coping in the closet with a bottle of Jack Daniels. He had officially repaired that broken rung on his racing ladder. As for Sunday, Boyer's fifth place finish capped off another solid chase. Clint Boyer wrapped up his season with another top five points finish and he proved all those naysayers wrong. All those naysayers in the midsummer that said, you see, Clint Boyer in 2007, that was all fluke luck. Now, when you put him under hot circumstances, he boils under the pressure. For Clint Boyer's 2008 double down, it was far from that. For 41 weeks, Clint Boyer was on his mission of becoming a NASCAR champion and that in itself deserves a lot of praise. Being disciplined to do one schedule is tough enough, so to do a cup and nationwide series season in the same year, that is an admirable act of dedication. A Clint Boyer doubling down on his grind is someone that is going to achieve a lot, and you look at his 2008 winning in both the cup and nationwide car, overcoming obstacles in the cup series, making the chase for the second year in a row, coming on strong in that chase, finishing top five in points in both the Cup and Nationwide Series, and to top it all off, this was the year that Clint Boyer became a NASCAR champion. It was a season that defined Clint Boyer as a championship caliber driver and a Cup Series star with a lot of potential. Now hopefully Richard Childress doesn't completely screw this up by splitting up Clint Boyer and Gil Martin and moving their 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series champion to the expanded 33 team. If you enjoyed Clint Boyer's 2008 Double Down, check out his Cup Series improvement from 2006 to 2007, or you guys can check out the absolute nightmare that was Richard Childress Racing in 2009. Other than that, this is Nathan for NRF Productions, Life's a Beach, and Then You Drive.